Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome to the all new Bug Bounty series. Now for those of you who have been following me on Twitter or actually read the update on YouTube via the post notification or the uh, the community section, uh, you know that I, uh, I have essentially started a Bug Bounty series and the reason I started one is because many people have been asking me for one and uh, I've been sort of pondering over the various ways I can approach it and I thought why not approach it uh, you know, with a real hands-on uh, approach because as I said, I've been getting into it uh, again and it's been really, really cool and exciting. I've got a few, uh, uh, actually found a few vulnerabilities. Uh, so I've been taking uh, part in a few programs over the last one or two weeks and I've really been enjoying myself and, th and I thought, why not make a sort of a, a walkthrough of what I do, what tools I use and the vulnerabilities I've been able to find and of course help you in your journey. So in this particular video, I'm gonna be showing you all the tools that I will use and the tools we'll be using in this series. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Now, for the operating system, I'm currently using Kali Linux because it pretty much comes installed with all the tools that I need and I don't have to go over installing them. But for those of you who are on Windows, and Mac OS, uh, more specifically Mac OS, uh, you can essentially install uh, Java, the, the Java JRE and the Java JDK. They'll essentially get you uh, set up for Burp Suite. And of course, you can use the Community Edition. I'll be primarily using the Community Edition because I don't want uh, to, to, I don't want to sort of segregate uh, the the audience. Uh, where I'm using the professional edition and they they can only use the community edition. So if you are on Mac OS, you can yeah, I'm pretty sure you know how to use the uh, the package manager that comes uh, with Mac OS. I'm not, not really sure about the name, but in any case, I'm using uh, Kali. You can use Parrot if you if you so wish. Uh, and uh, the first tool, of course, that I've mentioned is Burp Suite. All right. So Burp Suite, for those of you who don't know, is an intercepting proxy that has a repeater, sequencer, etc. So it allows you to modify requests and of course automate vulnerability detection and also allows you to perform brute forces. And uh, of course, as we know, it also has a spider. Now when it comes down to the browser, of course, I would recommend using Chrome, which I will uh, install later on. Uh, but for this particular video, I'm simply gonna be focusing on the extensions or the add-ons that you can use. So first of all, let me just open up the browser and I'll show you what, uh, what add-ons I recommend you use. So for example, uh, the first add-on uh, you should have installed, of course, is Foxy Proxy, which allows you to essentially uh, uh, enable the various proxies that you have set up. And that is uh, particularly for the use of Burp Suite. So you can set up the proxy uh, automatically with Foxy Proxy right over here. And of course, you can enable the Burp Suite proxy once you're ready to use it uh, when you when you begin your spidering process. All right, so that is the first uh, plugin or extension, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the next one is Cookie Editor or Cookie Editor Plus, whatever you feel is uh, essential for you. It essentially allows you to edit uh, the, your particular cookies uh, when performing authentication, uh, when you're performing authentication tests, etc., etc. You get the idea. The next tool uh, or the extension you need to have installed, of course, is Built With or Wappalizer, whatever you choose to use, whether you're using Chrome or Firefox. I personally use Built With because I just like how it works and how it sorts out all the data. So this allows you to, to essentially uh, take a look at what uh, languages, what technologies uh, the, the site that you're currently browsing was built on. So again, it also gives you CMS information uh, and much, much more. So you can check that out for yourself. They're all free, so you can uh, take a look at them. All right, now, of course, uh, when it comes down to other intercepting proxies, you can also use Zap. However, I'm not going to be using Zap in this video series. I'm gonna keep it very homogenous with the tools that I use, all right? So let's move on to the next tools. Now for fuzzing, I personally use WFuzz or whatever you wanna call it. So WFuzz comes pre-installed with Kali. So if, if I hit enter, we'll just give it a few seconds to load up. So again, for those of you wondering what exactly WFuzz is, uh, WFuzz is essentially a uh, a fuzzer and discovery tool that allows you uh, allows you to discover web content by using word lists. All right, so you can take a look at the usage here. It allows you to essentially brute force uh, the particular website and discover web based content. You're essentially fuzzing the website for various results given the particular word list you're using. All right, so I'm not going to get into the usage. We'll be taking a, lo a look at it a little bit more as we move along. Uh, the next tool we're going to be using is Dare, uh, is Derb or Darebuster, whatever you whatever you want to use. The the usage is pretty pretty similar. With, with Darebuster, you have the graphical user interface. But again, for those of you who don't know, uh, Derb and Darebuster are essentially used 
for brute force uh, to essentially brute force directories and the file names on web application servers. All right, so it's essentially used to find various files on web servers or misconfigured files, uh, essentially allowing you to find uh, uh, files that uh, are not public, uh, publicly exposed or you're not able to get a hold of. All right, uh, now for subdomain enumeration, of course, I uh, usually use two tools. One of them is NockPy and the other one is Sublister. So NockPy essentially allows you to perform subdomain enumeration with word lists. All right, now that's very important because with Sublister, it allows you to perform subdomain enumeration with the use of search engine. So I have them on my desktop here uh, and I will have the GitHub repositories for you. So this is Nock, uh, this is NockPy. Um, we also have Sublister. Let me just see if I can find it here. That is Seclist. I'll get to Seclist in a second. So we have uh, Sublister right over here. So uh, I already have cloned them to my desktop. The links will be in the description. All right. So uh, so let us check out Knock first. All right. So Knock again is very, very simple. KnockPy. Uh, and we will launch up KnockPy here. All right. So KnockPy, we hit enter. And again, this allows us to essentially uh, perform a subdomain enumeration with word lists or with the help of word lists. I'll talk about sec lists in a second. But for now, uh, again, uh, the usage is very, very simple. We'll be taking a look at it all. So for example, I can type in KnockPy. And of course, I type in the domain and the word list if, if I want to. So for example, I can type in hsplay.com. And if I wanted to specify a word list, I can say user share word lists and of course sec lists right over here and I can go ahead and take a look at all the discovery options here for the uh, subdomain enumeration all right so that is knockpy now we talk about sublister so we have sublister here uh, and uh, again we can simply just launch it right over here make sure you install the requirements if you haven't already so sublister we hit enter and of course it'll give you the usage right over here so you specify the domain and this will use open source intelligence or OSINT, which essentially uses the various search engines to enumerate all the potential uh, subdomains that are currently uh, exposed. Uh, so for example, if I type in hsploit.com, uh, I don't have any subdomains for that particular domain. Sorry about that. Um, I don't have any particular subdomain. So you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can essentially take a look at all the search engines and the other sources that it does use. So for example, Baidu, Yahoo, Google, Bing, uh, Netcraft, uh, DNS Dumpster, Varistotl, etc. Uh, and uh, again, because I don't have any subdomains for this particular uh, domain, uh, I'll not enumerate anything. But of course, it's a very, very powerful tool. I've been able to find various subdomains with this tool. Excellent tool. Now, while this is scanning, or we can actually just terminate that right over here, well, let's talk about sec lists. All right, so sec lists are essentially a, a, a great collection of lists for assessments that contain usernames, passwords, URLs, fuzzing strings, and common directories or files and subdomains. All right, so it can be used to enumerate a lot of information. That's typically why I prefer using sec lists. Uh, any penetration tester or bug bounty hunter will tell you that, sec, uh, that, that sec list is uh, a, a must have. All right, so you can take a look at the description here. Seclist is a security tester's companion. It's a, collective, uh, it's a collection of multiple types of lists uh, used during security assessments uh, collected in one place. So for example, for discovery, you have, um, for example, you have DNS, uh, you have DNS list infrastructure, SNMP, variables and web content. So if you take a look at web content, for example, uh, you can see we have the burp suite uh, paraminer we have cms uh, we have cms lists here urls web services and of course you have all the common backdoors apache lists um, for example one that i like using the most is the javascript miners for example when when essentially enumerating uh, potential miners on sites so all that good stuff i'll be taking a look at the usability of this with you guys as well uh, but seclist is a very very important and a very very useful so definitely check that out for yourself all right, now the next tool we're gonna to be utilizing and utilizing quite a bit is Scrappy. Now, most of you might not have heard of Scrappy, but Scrappy essentially allows you, uh, or is a web crawling framework that allows you to create your very own web crawlers uh, that essentially can take the place of the spidering functionality with Burp Suite. Of course, uh, it uses Python, and I'll be showing you how to create your very own for your particular projects. But for now, just get that set up, and I'll be getting into that uh, as we move along. All right, the next, uh, the next tool we'll be using uh, is, Shib uh, is CyberChef, sorry. Uh, so CyberChef, I've already taken a look at it in one of the Hack the Box videos, probably the most recent one. And uh, essentially CyberChef uh, allows you to essentially perform encoding and decoding of various algorithms right over here. So you can check that video out to see how to use it. Again, it's an extremely useful tool 
I recommend using this for, for whatever decoding or encoding you're, you're essentially performing here. It also allows you to perform uh, detection, which is awesome. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, we'll also be using Google Docs and uh, all the various Google Docs for, for file enumeration, subdomain enumeration, which again, I'll talk about as we move along. Uh, now, the other tool I like using, uh, which is an online or, or web-based tool, which is Watt CMS. So Watt CMS allows you to detect what CMS is currently being, uh, being used. So for example, if I type in hsflight.com uh, and it'll essentially detect the CMS that I'm using, it essentially performs uh, the same uh, set of functions that, um, that Built With or Wappalyzer would do, as, uh, except for the fact that it only works with CMSs. So if you are working on a site or you have a, um, if you have a target and you are essentially uh, wondering what CMS it's using, it will essentially uh, it will essentially enumerate what particular CMS is using. Of course, uh, the great feature is that it detects up to 467 potential content management systems. So, for example, for hsploit.com, we have WordPress 5 uh, version 5.1.1, which again can give you an idea of what's running on it. Uh, so you get the idea. Talking about uh, CMSs, uh, you we of course will be using WordPress scan, Joom scan. And um, yeah, we'll be using those CMS uh, tools for potential vulnerability detection. So th they will not be uh, extremely common, but of course they can be used to enumerate users and potential vulnerabilities with plugins or themes that are being used. All right, uh, for SQL, uh, we'll be using SQL Map. Of course, SQL Map is more of an automated tool, but I'll be showing you how it can be used uh, really, really well. I know I haven't mentioned any particular cross-site scripting tools because that again, uh, it requires its own video. But for now, let's just focus on the tools uh, that are uh, that are going to be used uh, most commonly. All right, so now let's talk about Striker. All right, so if I just go back to my desktop here and we talk about Striker, um, and I'll open up the sorry, that is a capital S. Sorry, Striker, and I will launch up Striker here. Make sure you install the requirements. Uh, and we'll open up the GitHub repository right over here so you can essentially take a look at what this tool is used for. All right, so Striker is an offensive information uh, and vulnerability scanner that allows you to check and bypass Cloudflare. For those of you asking, retrieve the server and powered, uh, so retrieve server and the, the various server headers, uh, fingerprint the operating system for the web server, detect these content management systems. So a uh, total of 197 plus CMSs are supported. It launches WordPress scan if you are using WordPress or if that particular site is using WordPress. It retrieves the robots.txt, who is lookup, uh, check if the target is a honey honeypot, pot scanning uh, with banner grabbing, dumps all kinds of DNS records, uh, all that good stuff. So the thing I like about Striker is it essentially allows me to detect whether we are working with Cloudflare. Uh, the, the default CMSs also get me the robots file. Uh, and f more specifically, Striker is uh, very, very good at enumerating DNS information. So for example, and you can take a look at the installation process here. It'll tell you to enter the target. Uh, so I can enter uh, hsploit.com right over here. It'll give me the IP address. And of course, it'll tell me whether we are using Cloudflare, which I am. So it tells me uh, it's detected the CMS. Uh, do I want to run uh, WordPress scan? I want to hit no. Um, so there we are, honeypot probability is 30%, trying to gather who is information. It also enumerates all the various ports that are currently open. So we have the DNS records and the MX records, which are quite important here. And then it starts using the Intel module. So we have the alpha, beta, and the gamma modules, which I'll explain what they are used for in future videos. Uh, but again, these are pretty much all the tools that I'll be using. Uh, in the next set of videos, I want to be focusing more specifically on, um, so you can take a look at right over here, the subdomain that we were not able to enumerate with, uh, with Sublister because it went off open source intelligence. We, right over here, we were able to enumerate a subdomain that I've kept hidden quite well, actually. And right over here, we have the other websites that are currently running uh, on that particular web server because I use a shared web server. Uh, uh, although I want to migrate to a dedicated server later on, but for now, this, these are the sites on that particular web server. So this can also give you a bit of a, uh, an idea of what other sites are running and potential targets that you can exploit and of course get uh, access onto the web server from which you can, uh, of course, attack the particular site that you had in mind from the beginning. All right, so that was a mouthful. 
Uh, all the links will be in the, in the description section. You can also check the post I'll be posting on the forum that will, again will contain all these tools plus a few others that I haven't mentioned in this video. So uh, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Let me know what other tools you guys will be using. The next video is going to be focusing on methodology and uh, the documentation of all the all the particular vulnerabilities, all the data that you get, and essentially how to keep yourself organized. And then we can get started with basic vulnerabilities and look, taking a look at sanitized cross-site scripting, all that good stuff. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks uh, or on the forum at hackersploit.org. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace, guys.